Well, I'm going to get into the budget for contract funds. I'll make it easier. I can find the guideline. Alright. The first question. What are the various words that come to your mind when you think of the word concept? What are the various words that come to your mind when you think of the word concept? Could you just send in your text messages, maybe for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'll give you over, just let you know all the various words that come to your mind. Differences of opinion. Viewpoint. Viewpoint. Sometimes the word could be a concept is an issue. A concept is a problem. A concept is uh, uh, something not very positive. Maybe. How can we have to do that? How can we manage something by understanding to that table? Quickly, can we tell me something specific? Why do conflicts occur? Why do actually conflicts occur in real life? Why? What are the reasons for conflicts to happen? Some 10 seconds quick messages, please. Mispatching thoughts. Absolutely, yes, you're right. Very true. Thank you, Why do conflicts actually happen? What are the factors which contribute to conflict? Some ideas from you. Send in your text messages. Send in your text messages. Ego, absolutely. Very true. I'm right or wrong. How can you ever be right when I'm right? Ego, all right. What else? What else could be the factor leading to conflict? Different objectives. People may not share that. Perceptions could be different from people to people, absolutely. Conflict is, yeah, different perceptions of views. I see it differently. A difference in opinion. Like this is in goals. Very true. This could be a number of reasons why do conflicts occur. But they do occur. They occur with individuals. They occur in family. They happen in meetings. They happen in organizations. They happen in project teams. Everywhere conflicts do, do happen. Alright. Let's look at how an awareness of Velvet King Goal can provide pointers to help us manage conflict and even present some conflicts as well. The Belvin Knowledge Series, every webinar is based on two parts. Part one is a quick summary of Belvin King Rules, and part two is an insight and an application of Belvin King Rules for that particular situation, which in this case is conflict management. So let's look at Velvet Team Rules, part one. Dr. Mervyn Velvet, who is instantly celebrating his 90th birthday, week after next in Cambridge, and I'm going to have a fashion, I'm going to meet him. Dr. Velvet created, discovered, powerful philosophy of how people can work together. Actually, all of us have got two roles that we play in our lives. What is the functional role? The job that we do could be general manager, human resources, the sales manager, the marketing manager. What are the functional roles that we have? So we all have a functional role. The functional role keeps changing. The functional role ought to change. As we grow, as we develop in our lives, the functional role keeps changing. It's a reality, it's good. So there's a functional role. The second role that Medic Belvin discovered is what he calls a team role. Functional role is something the job. The team role is what we are as an individual. Interesting. So what is a team role? Medic Belvin discovers team role as a tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate with others in a particular way. Some lovely words. Just the first word, a 
can then can I ask you to quickly send in a couple of text messages? What is the meaning of the word tendency? What does tendency mean? What does tendency indicate? What's tendency? Some quick couple of messages quickly so that we can be engaging and interacting. Tendency. What does it mean? Yep. Natural inclination. Fine, absolutely. I think it's a, almost a perfect word, natural inclination, a natural preference, possibly, a tendency. I'm sure, uh, let, let, let me ask you, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you, uh, how many of you have probably a regular breakfast every day? You don't skip a breakfast. And if you don't skip a breakfast, I'll just take any one of you. Could you quickly text and tell me what's your most favorite dish for breakfast? What do you love to have for breakfast? Let me just pick one of you. Any one of you could be, could be Julia, could be anyone, uh, anyone. Just, just tell, tell me, <coughs> what's your favorite breakfast? Yes, the one dish you love yeah, every day. Oh, thank you, Dulcina. The bread and butter. Absolutely, that's fantastic. So that's something you like. Uh, you like oats? Uh, and you like fruits? Oh my God, very health conscious people I can see. Lovely. Okay, what is that? Let me just take an example of, oh, that's okay. Parminder is bread and milk. That's fantastic. We couldn't tell me Parminder. I just take Parminder, the last one. What is one dish you don't like at all for breakfast? Unless next two days you are not going to have a meal and you have to have this, you don't like at all Parminda. Parminda, can I pick you on asking this question? What is you don't like? Meat in the morning? No, no, no. Absolutely. Great. I don't understand that. Okay. Honey. Oh, no rice in the morning. Absolutely true. Of course, there are some dishes which are okay. It is not that you love them, but you don't hate them as well. You have them. So all of us have some natural preferences, natural tendency, even in simple things like a breakfast. Isn't it true that we all have a tendency, a natural inclination in the behavior, in the way we live, in the way we behave? Naturally so. Right. Therefore, it's a tendency to behave. The interesting word is behave. Just think about it. Let me give a little illustration. Maybe um, a little after college, when some of you passed out of college, you did the job, first job, um, work in a nice town, uh, hard work for me, or maybe Friday evening, if it's on a Friday or six day, or a Saturday evening, Saturday at about 6.30 you realize, hey, we should go, I should go for a movie today, a picture. You go to one of your friends and say, hey, Let's go for a picture now, yeah. It's, it's, it's Friday evening or Saturday evening, whatever. And the other guy says, okay, sure, let's go. Come on. Let's jump into the car or jump into the bike and move right away. As you're riding, asking a question, oh, what happens if you don't get tickets to the movie? Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll see some other movie. Or if you don't get any ticket, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll have a meet together and come back and just have some, some just time. It's okay. It's the evening. We can just have some fun. One person reacts like that. Another person, you're going to ask him, uh, can we go for a film now? If we can, just try now. Wait a minute. What's the time now? It's quarter to seven. What's the day today? Friday or Saturday. On a Saturday or a Friday, you expect the movie halls to be empty for you and I to walk in and get our tickets. Forget it. You want to see a movie on Friday, Saturday, you thought about it at least a couple of days ago. I know, naturally, yes. Okay, oh no, no, forget the movie. Okay. Next time, if you've got a girl for a movie, who are you likely to call on? The first or the second? Most people answer the first, naturally, so. Oh, I don't want to go to this guy for a movie. Thank God. Even for a movie, he wants to make complete planning. Impossible. Forget it. Both behave differently, but both believe they're contributing. The first person believes I'm contributing because if she wants to go for a film because after all the weekend, just have some fun to watch a film and then also make it easy. Another person also thinks he is contributing. My God, I don't want to go try and struggle for tickets, pay huge sums and watch a stupid movie and get a headache 
I'm going to spend 500 bucks to get a headache. If you want to see a movie, better plan. I want this person to become a little more organized. Both believe they're contributing, but we think only one is contributing, and not the other. Because the person who says, think about it five days earlier, is different from what we're thinking, and that's no longer contribution for me. So a team role is a tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate the way you engage with others in a particular way. That's a beautiful description of marriage team role. Pelvic team role is a very large topic. It's an ocean. And I'm going just to give you a glimpse of it in the next few slides to give you the anchor for conflict management. Maybe discover nine key roles. You can see the pictures over there, but these are the nine key roles. Initially, the age and the ninth one was discovered as part of a huge effort in Cambridge, working on many teams, control teams. Many, many teams, many activities, and finally he discovered and published his first book in 1981. What are these nine team roles? The nine team roles can be beautifully bucketed under three buckets. Three groups, we call it. One is a task oriented team role, task related team roles, action related team roles. These team roles believe in task as a focus. Believe in action as a focus. What are these key roles? The first one is a guy with a whip in the hand, shaper. Who is the shaper? And the shaper has got some positives and also got some negatives. And the beautiful word of Mary Belvin, a lovable weakness. So look at the loving word, it's a lovable weakness, and that's what is at the bottom. What are the positive? Challenging dynamic, has a drive and courage, can set challenging targets, achieve it as well. Prone to provocation and can be blunt and abstract people. A shaper is highly task oriented. What's the key thing? Obstacles are irrelevant. You've got to throw them out. And in the process, can upset people. Walk into a shaper room and say, Boss, I've got a stomach upset today. Forget it. As long as there's stomach, someday they'll be upset. Okay, thanks. Shape. Task oriented. You have another task oriented team role, implementer. You can see the wheels in motion. Repetitive. Day in and day after. A lovely implementer. Process driven. Disciplined. Organized. Efficient. Turns ideas into action. Ask him to do something and he will make sure it is done. Punctuality is virtue. Time is very important. Task must be completed in time. And task must be completed. Loves putting a tick in the box on the task as he completes it. Very important. Has a justice for everything. Somewhat inflexible, slow to respond to new ideas and approaches. Once the process is defined, once a particular activity is designed and defined in a particular manner, anything that happens in between for change, no, no, we can't do that. That's implemented. It's a third lovely task oriented team role, which is a very unique one. It's a lovely definition, lovely name, I would call it, that completer function. Complete. The word is completion means perfect. It's complete. The whole arrangement is complete. That means immaculate. Finisher does it on time very well. So a complete finisher loves to do the task in time and also of a high standard of an excellent quality. For him, accuracy is vital. Perfectionism is very, very important. You can't compromise quality for the sake of time. Both are important. Accurate, conscientious, meticulous, professional. But you know, why is that duty? Because he wants to do both exceptionally well and also in time and time to stress in him. Anxiety caution is high and he's a bit reluctant to delegate. Because I don't know whether others will do it as well. Sometimes you hear them in offices. Oh God, look at the new guys who joined the company. I mean, I mean, he just don't have the same sense of perfection as we have. My God, what time is effect? A complete efficient. Shaper, implementer, and complete efficient. Three task oriented teams. You are another three, which is you are team or social. The guy on the Facebook in the morning, 
The guy with WhatsApp contact is, you know, he doesn't have enough memory. Memory is not enough for his contact list. And he can't even keep it. I mean, he, it's, he's got to be all symptom in the phone, doesn't ring for a couple of minutes. As a social investigator, enthusiastic, communicating, has contact, exploits opportunities, looks for opportunities. He's always tuned outside. He can find anyone anywhere very quickly. Tell him, do you know someone in a town he has never visited? Within two hours, you'll come back to someone who is X and Y and Z's and A's and B's known to me. Or optimistic, but can easily be bold and lose himself. He can move from one to the other and does not really focus on something very well. But that's allowable. Beauty. The beautiful word of merit is allowable. Everyone has it. Who does it have? None of us is living on a perfect. None of them in the world are perfect. Is it possible? He is a search investigator. Another guy, part of the team role, which is team of social data, a coordinator. The word coordinator here means somebody who encourages participation from people. He is not simply putting things together. He makes the whole thing happen. Calm, confident, clarify those, promote joint decision making. Can be seen a little bit at times as manipulative. Sometimes you wonder what the coordinator is actually doing. And sometimes you watch a Western symphony and a guy moving his hands up and down. Someone who doesn't know much about this particular music form genre can say that, I don't know, what is it doing? Everyone has got either an instrument to play or something to sing, or they've got some sheet in front of them, and they're all looking at it. I don't know what this guy is doing up and down. But sometimes a coordinator is ability to draw people, draw them out, encourage participation, put it all together, not lose sight of priorities, and make the multiple priorities converge nicely. Bit of a consensus guy, wants to join decision making. A shaper drives decision. A coordinator brings the consensus a little more. Can be seen as manipulated sometimes. And sometimes you wonder, why is he giving me the work that he should be doing? Possibly. A lot of people, they all have it. They have our little weaknesses. And the final guy, the lubricant in an engine. The guy who is that guy who who soothe us the injuries, the teamwork. A team worker, cooperative, caring, diplomatic, sensitive, our friction, maybe indecisive, when faced with tough decisions. Because any decision will hurt some people. How can you do that? He likes harmony. Even if an objective is not achieved, it's okay. After all, we must be together in it. We cannot be must feel good about it. Likes people to feel good about it. Doesn't like to hurt people, helps people, wants to help people. Shape up, implement up, computer official, resource investigator, coordinator, team worker. And the last three, which is the head part, the thinking or internal, the individual related team role, the bar which shines and glows a plant. A plant is somebody with a bit of a right brain mode, somebody who comes up with new ideas. Creative, imaginative, original, offers alternative approaches. Somebody who can change the dimensions of what we're discussing completely. Somebody who can think crazy. Somebody can come out with an idea which you never thought of before. Well, some of the ideas could be stupid, but you don't know which one is the biggest one if you want to listen to everything. But so many times, a plant is preoccupied, is thinking within himself, is talking to himself of the originality, and therefore will not be appearing to be communicating. That's not. That's the right brain. So you have a left brain, which dissects ideas. The right and wrong, the good and bad, the plus and minus, the zero one, the binary thinker, the monitor, the evaluator. Deserving, objective, logical. You can see the third eye. Logical, analytical, discerning, makes decisions based on facts. Loves Excel. Plant loves a paintbrush, like a soft. Loves an Excel. Everything has got to be data driven. Look for data. Can appear to be slow moving because it's cautious. Don't take us decisions. He always says it's better to make. The right decision slowly, then the wrong one quickly. 
may appear to lack the push and the drive. I'm likely to be inspiring to people because it points out what is not perfect, can see the problems ahead, can see the bottlenecks before, can see the potholes ahead of a kilometer, can see the black mold and the white. That's the white evaluator. The valuable white evaluator who can prevent an organization, can prevent an individual, can prevent a leader taking reckless decisions which can cost you leave. Look at the organization around. Many times we make decisions, organizations make decisions. So outside, God, how do they make this decision? It's so stupid. But yes, that. Once a evaluator prevents such catastrophe. You have a third guy who is neither an analyst nor a creator original, but has the ability to absorb knowledge like a blotting paper. Take knowledge from anywhere. Read the best practices and is full of his capabilities in that area and is ready to support when you want. I want to know about total quality management. I want to know about just in time. No problem. He would have probably devoured the Toyota's just in time system completely. He believes in understanding, absorbing the best practices and storing it as his knowledge. Knowledge for knowledge's sake itself is very valuable to this man, to this person. Specialist. And the specialist is rather quiet, sensual, single minded. Even after some years, you say, My God, I didn't, I, I've been working on it for five years. I still realize every time, Oh God, there's so much more to know that I still don't know. The more I know, the less I do. But contributes a matter of fact. Those are technicalities. So nine team roles, shaper, competition short implementer, coordinator, resource investigator, team worker, plan, much value specialist. The beauty is that that is great discovery, part breaking, affable, which is something unique. All of us have got all the nine team roles. Everyone has got all the nine team roles. But some team roles are like the bread and butter for Parminder, or like the meat for Parminder, or like the oats for someone else and the foods for someone else. That means someone who preferred team roles. That's a natural inclination. I have a natural inclination to be a resource investigator. I have a natural inclination to be a specialist. I have a natural inclination to be a monitor evaluator. Some are preferred team roles, two to three. I some are manageable team roles, about four approximately. These are manageable team roles. I can live with them. I can use them. I can handle them. They come to me. They are not the first step that I will take immediately, but I'm comfortable doing that. And some are, oh no, I can't do that. Very difficult for me to do. Some of the least preferred team roles. So all of us have got all the right team roles, but some are preferred, some are manageable, and some are so all of us have got all the nine tables, and the beauty is that, like I was talking said, we are what we repeatedly do. The whole Bergman table philosophy is based on behavior. I don't know my behavior unless someone tells me. He's like a mess in front of me. He's like getting angry. The guy who lose a shot, to lose his temper. You don't lose temper. Oh no, I never lose temper. If I don't ever get angry, it's always for the right reason. And look at that lovely English word, lose temper. We know it only after we lost it. It's difficult to know our own behavior that easily. Of course, it costs us self realization. It's the observers that give you the perspective of behavior. So, the team role is based on self perception and four to six observers who know you well in workplace and then they have a choice of depicting you on 72 words, 45 positive words and 27 weakness words and each word can be a one tick or a zero tick or a two tick. For example, if somebody were to describe me as Ravi, accurate, uh, maybe sometimes he is one. Oh yes, Ravi is very accurate. I mean, the way he does things, I can see absolute accuracy in everything there. He looks for accuracy, does it. 
Oh, I could have been. I mean, I could have Don't go together. Come on, don't. I, I can imagine that. So, no thing. So, by doing this and using a self perception inventory, is beautifully combined. And today we have a version which is the seventh version of a state of art software, which creates a beautiful well being profile, a table profile, which describes me, my strength, my preferred table, my multiple table, and my least preferred table. And it has a lot of valuable insights to me. What do others think of me? What are my strengths? What are my global weaknesses? Where are my global weaknesses okay to keep? Where should I handle them a little better? So that's the thing. So the key messages are one, people are different. People's preferences are different. People are not bad. People with themselves have got more strengths than weaknesses. One of many powerful philosophies. We all have more strengths than weaknesses. If you have more weaknesses, I think we have some challenges which we need to take help from. Otherwise, we all have more weaknesses, no more strengths than weaknesses. But they are different. The beauty is different. The beauty is complementing each other very powerfully and very beautifully. That's the discovery of the keyboard. Okay. How does it help for conflict management part two? Building for conflict management. Understanding, appreciating this, appreciating the task tools, appreciating the team roles, appreciating the uh, thinking related team role. How can you work in terms of conflict management? The key to the start of managing conflicts, and in fact, getting the best out of potential. I mean, conflict can be good as well. We can get the best of the conflict as well. Is a beautiful expression. Treat other person, if you can see it nicely, treat other person, other people, as you would like to be treated. It's a grown expression, biblical. All religions talk about it. All scriptures talk about it very beautifully. But I'm going to ask you a little interesting question. This is a very powerful philosophy, very meaningful philosophy. It's absolutely right, but there's only one small little issue here. The moment we say, treat other people as you would like to be treated, there is an underlying assumption in this statement which may not be true, may not be valid. What could that be? Could you text in your messages, please? Treat other people as you would like to be as good, from a philosophical angle, ethical angle, principal angle, absolutely right. But it has one underlying assumption which in a normal workplace behavior may not be perfect, in a real life may not be perfect. What could be that assumption or a statement inside which is not valid? Treat other people as you like to be treated. Please like everyone so that you all know what you're thinking and writing beautifully. Then for 10, 10, 15 seconds to do that, yes. Abiola, could you send it to everyone, please? like to hear you. What do you say? Treat other people as you'd like to be treated. Has got one underlying assumption which may not be valid. Okay, you can't get treated the way you want all the time. Oh yes, absolutely, that is too very nice one. One more underlying assumption. Treat other people as you would like to be treated. There's something inside which is not true. Respect. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And because this statement has got one assumption which may not be true. Just think about it. Treat other people as you would like to be treated has one assumption which is not valid, which may not be true. What could be that assumption? Oh, 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 lovely, lovely, I mean, come now, fantastic, thank you. Others may not like bread and butter, absolutely. Yes, something may like, so it's about perception, people are different, they are brilliant. I mean, something like bread and butter in the morning, and somebody walks into a booth there and says, wait a minute, I don't want bread and butter, I want some alu paratha with dogs of butter. And somebody says, wow, some lovely jalebis with rabdi will be excellent in the morning with maybe some bajiyas would be even better. Wow, how can you eat that? What do you mean? How can you eat that? I love it. It's fantastic. People are different. Therefore, if the sentence has to be slightly modified, keeping that as a said, what would, how would the sentence look? 
treat other people as you would like to be treated. Slight modification, just one word has to change. A lion might not eat because you are late. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Anshan. Perfect. So can you change the sentence, all of you? Any one of you try? Aha, neha, that's a slight thing to be. Treat other people as, as they would like to be treated. Brilliant. Ahi, what a perfect, perfectly. Absolutely, thank, thank you, Guru. Treat other people as they would like to be treated. But we don't know how people like to be treated. That is the understanding well being table over here. Understanding that people are different, that different types of behavior. Their requirements will be different. Their perceptions are different. Their mindsets are different. Treat other people as they would like to be treated. Therefore, if you look at it, conflict happens because we like people who are like us. We like others who think like us. We want to work with people of, and engage with people who are similar. Similarity is something which we believe is useful and therefore there's no conflict. But when there's a bit of a dissimilarity, I think it becomes a complicated aspect and that is where the challenge really happens as well. But if you look at people, people are different. Each one has a natural inclination, a tendency to behave, a tendency to contribute, a tendency to interrelate as well. So conflict handling is a function of three things which are very important. One, commonality of purpose. I think the moment we remove the people from the picture, see it as what is the purpose for both of us to discuss this? What's the purpose for both of us to work on this? What's the purpose behind our need even to discuss this? To at least a few seconds for a few moments, we remove the person from the mind to start with. So conflict handling is a function of commonality of purpose. Conflict handling is a function of communication between people. And I want to give some interesting insights. The word chemistry. And sometimes chemistry need not be the same two elements working together. You can have two dissimilar elements we can produce something amazingly powerful. Of course, yes, two dissimilar elements, if not manageable, can also produce a fire. But two things that are different combined together can be extremely good. A lovely fresh lime soda with a bit of a sweet and a salt can be great. Sweet and salt are more conflicting. But some people say, hey, wait a minute, just try it out. A little bit of a sweet and a dash of salt, it is wonderful. And sometimes people say, when you cook a nice savory, have a dash of sweet, it adds to it. And people say, a nice little beautiful sweet, a small pinch, not even a pinch, half a pinch of salt can make it come alive. Even if you watch Australia, Master Chef, you can see some of these things. The balance can be beautifully done. It's a chemistry between people is important. And chemistry is not necessarily given. Chemistry can be developed, chemistry can be acquired. And conflict handling is a function of communication to converge. Not communication to prove. Not communication to defend. Not communication to deflect. Not communication to escape. But communication to converge. So quickly, if you look at it, three powerful elements. Commonality of purpose. Number two, chemistry between people. The evolved chemistry, the worked on chemistry, the developed chemistry, and communication to converge. I think if you can look at all these things very beautifully, look at people being different, and the differences can be valuable. Ten, conflict can be managed effectively. Therefore, what are the five Critical elements of confidence. I'm going to give you some simple insights. Nice one. Number one, desire to resolve or synergize the conflict. Resolve, which means disappear, or do something new out of the conflict. The desire, both can be part of desire. Resolve can be to maintain, resolve can be just move forward nicely, synergize can be creating something different as well. So I need to have an inner desire. 
respecting diversity, understanding diversity. It's okay to like bread and butter. Somebody might say, how can you have bread and butter in the morning? Bread? How can you have bread and butter at all? That's so silly. Of course you can have bread and butter. Just love it and eat the bread. Understanding the diversity. They need to establish a dialogue. The biggest challenge that happens in conflict is the dialogue breaks. A dialogue is communicating, keep the communication alive to make sure that a new path, a different path, a slightly modified path can be found. And using criteria which is neutral, neutrality thinking is a powerful element of conflict management. It is not me, it is not you, it is a common purpose or it's a different purpose or let us keep it as a neutral purpose and start working towards it. Neutrality is difficult. One of the powerful skills of influence is with neutrality. If you have tremendous neutrality, the ability to influence is extremely high. Passion, but maintain the neutrality with diversity can really, really make people follow you very effectively. And of course, critically, focusing on the difference or trying to bridge the common, build the commonality. Five critical elements of conflict. Desire to resolve or synergize the conflict. Understanding the diverse view, establishing the dialogue, using neutral criteria, complementing rather than focus on differences. Seven guidelines to effective conflict management by the process thinking application of the value rules. Number one, people are different. It's good to be different. Respect diversity. In fact, I've not got it on my slide show, but I'm going to put it as words now. Celebrate diversity. It's not just people are different. Enjoy it. Oh, it's fantastic. It's different. It's so nice. Imagine if everybody is the same. What a disaster it could be. Terribly boring. People are different. Imagine a home. A born husband and wife are completely organized. Absolutely meticulous, perfect husband and wife. Oh God, the house will be like a museum. They both are totally disorganized. You don't even know when things will happen. But if they are different, one is very organized, the other one is absolutely not organized, they have a big problem. In fact, it's good because they can complement each other. One can bring in the order and discipline, one can bring in the beauty, the creativity, the joy of spontaneity. They can both very well nicely. People are different, respect diversity, celebrate diversity. Avoid judging the person. It's a team role that is different. Look at the language of team role. Oh, I think he's so, he's so finicky. She's so fastidious. She's, uh, she's becoming fussy instead. Oh, that's a complete definition. Because she's a complete definition, I think, uh, I think ultimately uh, the project or activity we are doing will really turn out to be good. Yeah. It's not a little difficult, but I think I need one. Or somebody says, oh, he's so process driven. Yeah. No, he's an implementer. It is good. Because things have to happen. He's right. Oh, I, he really is, uh, uh, he's such a stupid man. He's too demanding. Oh, no, no, not really. He's a shaper. I think he can raise the bar very well. I think the more, oh, the person is so, uh, so, oh, so conservative. No, no, wait a minute. He's a quantity evaluator. I think he can show you the wrong side of things. He will help us to make a better decision. I think that you have to be looked into because a quantity evaluator can add value to me. Avoid judging the other person. It's a team role. A, think in terms of team role. It's not he, it's not she, it is a team role. And I have the same. And all of us can use our different team roles occasionally, even the least for once. And we do. Think about it. These are the team role opposites. A shaper drives. Strong drive. And you've got someone else who is supporting. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's have a cup of coffee now. A shaper thinks, what are you a team worker? You are you're fussy, body cuddly. And a team worker, my God, you, you make me jump shiver. But I guess what I need it. You need a lubricant to run an engine. But you can't have one year lubricant, you need a fuel to run the engine. You need both. And you can't have fuel telling the lubricant, 
get out, or by the vice versa. And the vice not happen because the liberty can never say the fuel is out. Separate work. A coordinator generalizes. Coordinator is broad. Brings people together. The specialist gets kept with the step. The plant is thinking, I theorize it. Somebody will say, oh, he will come out with crazy eyes, don't talk to him. No, he's a plant. He can change the video. Thinking, he can change it. He's giving some new idea to my perspective. I can change and implement that applies. So you need both. Resource investigator, the Facebook guy, always outside, recognize opportunities. But someone's got to establish the set systems. The sex established system, the computer finisher. These are the table road opposites, and of course, you have a bunch of IUHR who is in question as well as the opposite. And when you see an opposite, if the thing is opposite, see it as complementary, using the table road language. That can make sure, hey, wait a minute, it's not a conflict, it's a new perspective, perhaps. Effectiveness comes from seemingly incompatible people. He was seeing me if they understand and complement each other. Look at the jigsaw puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle got different shapes. And the shapes will not fit in unless one allows the other one to fit in with a bit of a weakness, with a bit of a curve inside, with a bit of a gap inside, with a bit of a break inside. And people can be incompatible, but they can work very effectively in their understanding complement, then that becomes a driving combination, a profit combination. And they can combine beautifully. And in the whole process is to understand the world. We will communicate well to the opposite people. Adapt your style. Communication is not what I say, but communication will get achieved. If I'm talking to a plant and ask a plant to explain something, plant is thinking. A right thinker, he a right brain thinker, meanders a little bit. Until a plant to be precise is impossible. Plant will take time to do that. Of course, plant also has learned how to adapt well when he communicates to Shepa. I think understanding the people's skill role will help us to communicate well, recognizing Shamba, Tigro's language and communication is helped by a powerful language. And Look at singular positives and build on aggregate. When there is conflict, instead of discussing the difference, discuss what is commonality. Okay, where are we agreeing first? Where are we on the same page? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you've got two things where we differ. Let's see and start using your ability together to build and bridge those. Look at strengths and positives and build on the aggregate. As one of you said, the you in the beginning, see, conflict is just, just another view, and there are hundreds of views possible. After all, there is nothing which is axioms in the world. Some rises in the east is axiom, at least as of today, tomorrow I don't know. Based on past years, but I don't know. Explore where the individuals come from in terms of team roles. And if you see the team role, if you see the viewer link it to the team role, Aha, it's not a bad view, it's not a wrong view, it is that team world's view, and that's going to help me to manage and do something better. It's not a conflict, it's a different perspective being given. Maybe we'll get something new, better. Tasks and people can coexist, though they seem to be opposite. I want to be task driven, not people are important. What can coexist? Ideas and actions can coexist. You need the ideas to act upon. You need Actions to convert ideas can coexist. Width and gift can coexist and should coexist. Either in terms of market, in terms of people, yes. Gender and specialization can coexist. You need both. That means coexistence in the same opposites. It's like colors. Black and white is opposite colors many times. But black and white can usually coexist in the same fabric. It looks wonderful, in fact. The mix is something new and something worth, which means a conflict can be seen as something new, something worth. Seven guidelines for effective conflict management using the Tingo language, respecting diversity, celebrating diversity, and complementing each other, we become more effective, more purposeful, and 
be synergized to produce a better effect. So remember, nobody is perfect, but two people together, three people together, a team together can be perfect. Balvin team roles and conflict management. Life requires protecting conflicts, and almost all conflicts can be protecting conflicts. That complains the webinar. If you have any questions, anything you want to share, you can write to me now. You can write to me later. You will get a mail from me as well, and we will also upload it and for you to see this, and it will be nice to hear from you how it will be helpful to you as well. Thank you, and have a lovely, productive afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful time. And let's do our best to make the conflict disappear and create some new synergies. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.